my name's Rosie. Happy, I was going to say it's happy first day back to school, but that's only Leicestershire. Um, my, the kids have gone back to school today, so I'm very happy. <laughs> I know you, most of you have probably got another week, haven't you? Um, I hope you're all okay. Hope you're having a good day. Um, today we're going to do some fabric painting. So if any of you saw my last session, we did some lino printing, which is where we carved out some images. We rolled the paint on top and then we used them as like stamps to go on top of the fabric. But today we're just going to do straight up painting. Um, I've had a little go at a few and the possibilities are endless and the outcome I think is quite fantastic. And the idea really is to get yourself some pre-loved clothes, some old clothes you don't want anymore, or clothes from charity shops or car boot sales, which is what I've been doing. And just um, giving them a bit of care and attention, a bit of extra love and a bit of longevity, I guess. Um, there's so many plain bits of clothing out there that are otherwise going to be discarded that I think we could make extra special um, and then people can use them again. So I'm going to show you a few of the things that I've done so far and then I'm going to show you how I did them. And I think all of you are very capable because it's very easy. Uh, it's basically just painting really simple shapes onto fabric. It's super easy, I promise. So this is the first, is this the first one I did? I think this is the first one I did. So these are, I'm trying to make sure my head's not being covered by the signs because currently my eyes are being covered. I'm just shifting along. I will move the camera shortly when I start painting. The first thing I've got are these pair of shorts. So these shorts were one pound from a car boot sale. One, one English pound. And they look like this now. So as you can see, I've just used the kind of pocket areas to kind of add some simple designs, simple shapes, just a couple of colours. And this is the joy of this, is that you can go as big or as little as you want. You can go as simple or as detailed as you like. And I think they're quite, quite fantastic. So there's a little pair of shorts. Now, as I go along and show you them, I'm just going to check what they're made of because um, I wanted to say that cotton is the best thing to paint on, but then I remembered that actually this isn't, I don't think this is full cotton. So I wanted to make sure that the, I tell you which are the best kind of um, materials to use. Cause I think, oh, th this hasn't got a label in it, has it? Of course not. Why would it? Why would it have a label in? So I'd like to say that 100% cotton is probably the best. So far, I think I've used mainly cotton and I found that they're probably, so anything that's sort of cotton or linen blended, let's check these trousers, what are they made of? They are, mm -hmm. oh, these are 100% cotton, okay. So a nice thick cotton is quite nice. So these are the second thing I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna show you the back of them first. A lovely pair of yellow, mustard yellow gingham trousers that were one English pound from a car boot sale. And then I've just painted over the top of them with this beautiful pattern. So I've got a bit of writing on there as, as well. So we've got, I'm just trying to make sure, hang on a minute, let's just make this nice and straight. So you'll probably notice straight away that I'm a big fan of asymmetry, so asymmetrical, so they're not the same both sides. But what I'm hoping to show you is just how simple it can be, because essentially, if you think like this one here is a very, very simple design, I've just done some lines, but in amongst some other bits and bobs and different colours, it looks really effective. So those ones are lovely. And then the last one I'm going to show you, before I do, I'm just going to see if I can see the chat. No. Okay. I'm just making, I'm just making sure I can see people. Right. This is the last one that I did, which is very, very full on, very exciting. So this is a pink shirt. I believe this is also cotton. Let's just double check. Okay, oh, so this is 92% cotton and 8% linen. So I think anything that's got a linen blend is really nice because it's super thick and durable, but still smooth enough to paint on. So, 
as you can see, I've done loads of stuff on this. I've gone crazy. But then the back, you ready for the back? Oh, it says could really use a holiday on it. I thought it'd be a cool holiday shirt to wear. And the reason I could really use a holiday is because I've had both of my children with me for the whole of the summer holidays. So I'm very tired. And this is the only sort of thing I managed to do while they were around. There we go. I think that looks pretty good, right? I'm quite pleased with that one. So they're my three example pieces, just to show you what's possible. So anything's possible, really. You can do whatever you like, and it doesn't have to be that complicated. What I'm going to show you today is going to be maybe quite, quite a bit more simple. Um, but if you're an avid painter, then you can really do whatever you want here. And if you're not an avid painter, you'd still do what you, whatever you want, because there's some really simple shapes on there that anybody can do. Um, so today I've got this white shirt, which was 50 pence from a car boot sale. 50 pence, that's less than, it's about the same price as a bag of crisps, I guess. And I think this is 100% cotton. Yep, it says right there, 100% cotton. So 100% cotton is good because it's nice and thick. Um, it washes nicely uh, and it's easy to paint on. So this is why I'm trying to find out what they're all made of because there are some uh, materials that are perhaps not as easy to paint on or they're quite porous. So you'll find with kind of like silks or um, kind of shiny, shiny viscosey, I think viscose is how you say it, viscosey materials. They're quite porous. So what you'll find is when you paint on them, they just soak up the paint and that's not necessarily a problem you'll probably use more paint or the the worry is that it bleeds and then you don't get nice straight lines so i would always look for sort of cottony materials can't go wrong with cotton especially if you're only paying 50p for it so this is what i'm going to paint on today because it's a nice white one so it should show up my designs nice nicely for you on the camera um, the things I'm going to use, I'm going to show you the materials because this is really important. I'm not expecting people to sort of paint along with me today. Uh, obviously, you're very welcome to, but the emphasis really is just on you being super creative and doing whatever you want to do and experimenting. And the joy of this is that you can experiment if you're using pre-loved clothes. If you're using clothes that are in your wardrobe that you've not worn for years and would otherwise go to a charity shop, then why not? have a go um and also if you're buying clothes from secondhand shops or car boot sales again it's we're not like adding to the piles of clothes that are being thrown away at a horrible rate the, the idea is that we're gonna glow up these clothes and use them again the other thing that you could do if you are super conscious about using fabric if you want to have a go and you're worried about ruining an item of clothing then what I would re recommend is getting yourself an old tea towel or like cotton napkin. You can get those fairly cheaply. Again, you can get them secondhand. If you were to get some secondhand tea towels that were plain on one side, then you could use those as your scrap experiment pieces. They're gonna feel the same. The fabric's gonna feel the same. The paint will go on them the same. They'd also be really good for testing your washing um, because one of the things that you'll have to do with most of these paints is heat seal afterwards, which is ironing over your um, garments so that you can wash them that, so that the paints don't run. So if you're feeling anxious about that, then maybe have a practice on some old tea towels. But I think the key here is cotton mainly, cotton and linen, those sort of materials. So I'll move on to the paints next. The paints I'm using today are these ones. So the brand is pa Pabeo, this one beginning with P here. And it comes in a set of six in this little lovely little box here. So you get all your primary colours and you get a white and a black. Let me turn them around so that they're, they're facing in the nice way. No, they're not facing a nice way. Anyway, they come in this box. You get six of them. And currently on Amazon, they're just under £10 for those six. Now I've painted on those three garments that I've just shown you and I'm not anywhere close to the end. In fact, I'm probably not even halfway through any of the paints, paint colours yet. So that just gives you an idea of how far they go. I think pretty far. I think that's quite good for £10. Um, the amount that I've painted on all of those items and I've still got loads left, I think is a good sign. 
I've also let my five-year-old use these paints. Um, and as you probably know, children like to really dip their paintbrushes in. So they go far. So they're about a tenner. So I think they're a really good starting point. Um, and also, like I say, you can let kids use them, if you dare. The other ones I've got, which I might use today, I'll see how I'm feeling, are these neon ones. So I was just having, I completely forgot how much these cost. I let my, these are the ones I let my five-year-old use because she likes painting unicorns on t-shirts. Um, I couldn't find the set because I think I got these as a gift, but I think they're around the same price. I think you're looking at, this is a set of five. So you get your neon, yellow, orange, pink, and green, and you also get a black. And I think they're a similar kind of £10 mark for a whole set. And they are this brand. So Textile Neon. And I think the brand is Marabou, which I've never heard of before. But they're just like the standard ones you'd get if you typed in fabric paint into sort of Hobbycraft or, um, you know, those sort of websites or Amazon. Then this is the sort of thing you're going to get. And I think they're kind of across the board fairly similar. I think the key is to make sure you get ones that are aimed at adults and not at children. I think the ones aimed at children are probably less good. And when I say less good, I think it will probably be consistency and also um, washability. So if you get the ones that are aimed at adults, I don't think it matters which ones you get or which brand you use. These have been great. I just had, I had a, these as a test. I got these as a gift. I just had a go with them and I've washed a few of the items. You can't tell that they've been washed. So that's a really good sign. So these are your paints and paintbrushes. I have just got a selection of little paintbrushes. Um, I've got a couple of favorites. I think these two are my favorites. Uh, and they're quite small, as you can see, they're little ones. And they're, I mean, they're broken. They don't even work properly. But you know when you just get used to a particular size of brush and that's kind of your favorite. So I will not use any other brush because they're my faves. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what size, you can choose whatever you want. These, I believe, came from my kids' paint by number sets, so they don't have to be fancy. I would also recommend having a flat brush like this. So your flat brush will do nice big strokes, which I will show you shortly. But really, whatever you like, doesn't matter. They don't need to be fancy. You might want a pencil if you want to have a go at drawing stuff out to begin with, or chalk. Um, I just go for it. So it depends how confident you're feeling. You can make some templates, which we'll try, or you can just go straight paint onto the fabric. I think that's the best way because it's more fun. But if you want a pencil, go for it. Um, and then the other thing that you need to remember, which is the most important thing, is some paper to go in between your items. So I've just got some bits of scrap paper here. It doesn't matter what you use. I'm going to use these old scrappy bits of newsprint. Um, and these are to go in between. So first of all, you want them to go in between your garment so that you have a nice flat surface to work on. And also the paint's not gonna go through onto the other side. So we're just making sure. You also might wanna put paint around you depending on where you are. I should probably put some paper around because I'm on my land rug, um, but I have already managed to get paint on it, to be fair. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> that. Um, I'm quite a messy worker, as we'll soon find out. So I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to just shift the camera ever so slightly so that it's a bit closer up on the garment rather than my face. And then I'm going to start painting and I'm just going to talk you through it. And we'll talk through some shapes and some ideas. Um, I'll draw some out just to begin with, just to give you an idea. And then we're just going to go for it. We're just going to have a go. So I'm just going to lay this out and then I'm just going to excuse the wobble on the camera for one second and excuse my close up face. We're just going to see. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my goodness. Let's see how that looks. That's better. Okay. So now we've got how far back do I need to come? A bit further back, a bit further back. But what I'll probably do is start at the bottom and work my way up. I think that's always a good starting point to start on an edge. Um, I'd also maybe consider if you were working on something with a pocket, like this guy, start with your pocket because that feels safe. Um, it's a small area, it's a good place to start, it's less worrying, 
and then you can work your way out. But this one hasn't got a pocket, so we're going to start from the edge. So I'm just going to move it ever so I know you can't see the collar, but because I'm going to start at the bottom. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure the inside is nice and covered with paper. So these are big bits of paper that I use for screen printing. Um, so they're nice and thick and you can use as much paper as you want. Bigger paper is better because then you're not going to have seams. In fact, I'm going to move it that side. I think I'm going to start from here. And you don't need to fill the whole space. You just need to remember to move your paper as you go. Now these, the great thing about these paints is they dry quite quickly. So you don't need to worry too much. You might, if you lent on it by accident, you might get some paint on you, but they dry relatively quickly, which is quite nice. It's quite useful. So once you've flattened out your garment, I did try to iron this shirt, but it's all a bit creasy still. That's not a worry. The main thing is that when you're, if you've ever been tattooed, you will have noticed that the tattooist will kind of stretch your skin as they're going. And that's kind of what we're going to do with the garment. We're going to sort of stretch the fabric whilst we're painting it, which you'll see in a moment. I've got these bits of card here because I just want to do some examples um, of shapes. Like I said, I just go in freehand. I just go for it, go for my life. And I just think as I go, see where it takes me. If you don't like working like that and you want a bit more preparation, then I would recommend trying some designs on some card and then thinking about where they might sit. You can even cut them out and then paint around them or draw around them and then paint on top. So I've got these bits of card here just to show you that. And also the reason I want to show you that is I want to show you the different type of paint strokes you'll get with your paint brushes. The reason that I mentioned the flat, bleh, flat brush here is because that will get a nice thick stroke. So I've got a marker pen here. And if you imagine like a thick pen or like a highlighter, it will make a nice thick zigzag like that. Or it would make a nice wave like that. Or it would do a nice circle or a nice spiral. So if you imagine you've got a highlighter pen it's kind of going to act the same way as a flat brush will. And the reason I tell you this is because I like to do a mixture of thick lines and thin lines. A good example of this is on this pink shirt again, where we have got, if you see at the bottom, so we've got some thin lines here. So you've got your thin spiral, for example, and then you've got your thin stars. Then you've got a really super thick heart and zigzags. And I've used that flat brush to get those lines. Nice thick lines that aren't neat, but they look really good against the thin lines. So we're going to do both of those today. So if you imagine your highlighter pen is your flat brush, that's the sort of effect you're going to get. And then if you want a thinner design, so I'm just going to, as an example, I'm just going to draw a star. Now I like my stars to have lots of points. Where have I put the lid? There it is. So here's your star. And then what you might do is you might cut that out. So I'm going to cut this out quite carefully because if this is your template, then this is exactly what it's going to look like once you paint it around it. And this is one of those things, if you see my any of my sessions before, I always try and um, think of those points where you can make things less scary. So this is the point where if you're an feeling anxious about painting on a shirt, then cutting this star out nice and neatly takes away all that tension and worry, because once you've got this star, there's nothing else to worry about. All you've got to do is paint around it. It acts as a stencil and you know that as long as you paint around this shape, that's what it's going to look like on the shirt. So if you're anxious about painting straight onto it, then I would recommend this sort of thing. But I'm going to show you some different shapes on this shirt. So what I would say is maybe pay attention to the, the shapes that I'm painting. If you don't feel safe 
painting straight onto the shirt, then you could copy those but onto a piece of paper and then cut them out. And then you've got your templates like that. So that's a lovely star. So we could start with a star because they're quite fun to paint. We'll go through a different, some different techniques. So I just want to make sure, I might just move the camera ever so slightly more closer, just so we get a real nice, whoop. I don't want my screen to fall out onto it though. That would be awful. Okay, we're okay. If I move that a bit further. Um, let's have a look. So I'm gonna start with a thin line. Start with my favorite little paintbrush. I've got my paper in between. So really, as I said before about painting on a pocket, you wanna start with someone, some, something that feels less scary, right? So I always look at the seams of the item. So this is quite nice because you've got your buttons running down the middle. You've got loads of corners and seams that you can work with. And instead of looking at it as a whole shirt and going, oh my goodness, what do I do with this? How do I even begin? I always look at it and go, right, this corner, this corner here looks like a lovely spot. This is all I need to worry about. If I was to have a template, if I get my little star and pop that on there, Perfect. That star fits lovely in that corner. Once you've done that star, you then just work away from it. And then it becomes less scary because you're just filling small spaces rather than thinking of it as a whole piece. And that's why I think most of my items look completely random because I've not thought of them as a whole. I've just gone for it. But I think that works. I think that's a nice way of working. I think that's good fun. So I'm going to show you all of the shapes that I feel comfortable painting freehand. So there are some shapes that I wouldn't feel confident. So like faces, for example, are quite difficult and I would want to draw that out to begin with and maybe make a stencil out of it. But if I show you all the shapes that I feel comfortable just going for, then they're things that you can copy and make into your own style. You might want to make templates for them first, but I feel I feel confident that all of these shapes will look good painted onto fabric no matter how you do them um, and everyone will have their own way. So I've just got to decide now the best bit is what colour to use first. I think I'm going to use green. Yeah I think I'm going to go with green. Let's start with the green. So the main thing I would say about these paints doesn't matter how long you've left them give them a good shake before you use them because they're um, what I've found is that they tend to separate ever so slightly. So if you don't shake them, you might pop your paintbrush in and it'd be quite watery and you don't want to put that straight onto this because that's when it starts to spread. So give it a nice shake. And then once you open it up, because you've shaken it, what you'll find is that there'll be a little paint, little bit of paint in the lid. So I always use this first because that feels safer. What you'll find with fabric painting is because it's quite porous compared to paper is you're probably going to have to dip your brush into your paint more often than usual. So this way I feel safe holding this lid because it's smaller than the, the tub. Um, and that way I save time because my tub is close to my paintbrush so I can dip, paint, dip, paint, dip, paint. So that's why this takes a little bit longer than normal painting because you're doing quite a lot of dipping. So I'm just going to move this a bit even closer. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to draw that lovely star. I'm going to try and copy this, but freehand so you can see how easy it is. And we're going to go for it. So the first thing that I would say is when you first dip, you don't want to dip all the way, just a little bit. And you almost want to turn your paintbrush against the edge of this little um, lip here so you don't have loads and loads of paint on your brush. I don't know if I'm swinging that around too much. So you don't want loads and loads, but you need a fair bit. Uh, we're gonna go for it. So where shall we start? Let's point upwards. So essentially, can you see that I'm spreading this cotton out as I go? And I'm just gonna try for a straight line. And then I'm gonna go down this way. So that's looking good already. I'm gonna have to dip again. So I'm going to go along these lines quite thinly and then I will go over them again 
when I feel happy with the design. I feel safer doing that than doing lots of thick lines to begin with. So I'm just going along, hopefully you can see that, yeah. And making these lovely straight lines, trying to make sure that the points at the end are super pointy and neat. And this is why we iron our shirts before we paint them, because this would be super difficult if they were creased. Well then, what am I gonna do here? Dog hair, caught in the paint, lovely. And then go down there. Nice, so I've just got to do this one last point. I don't want it to crash into the seam. So I'll just stop it there, I think. I think that works, doesn't it? Hopefully you can all see that. Yeah. So that's your basic outline. And so now, don't need to worry about anything else. I've just got to go over it again. And it's basically the same as any other normal painting. You want it to be quite thick. You don't want to splodge loads on. You want to spread it out nicely. When you get to that top bit, you want to do a nice point. If you like the super thin lines, then you don't need to go over this again. You could crack on with something else. Um, but this is my style. I quite like kind of cartoony, um, that kind of cartoony style. Now, the other thing that I would recommend at this point is thinking about which way you're going to go round when you go over your design. I'm left handed, so you might have seen there my hand started to go that way. And then my hand realised that if I went that way, I'd probably smudge my hand all over this lovely star. So this is why I'm working my way anti-clockwise so that I don't smudge my hand. I'm going to pop the lid there now because I feel confident. I'm not going to mess it up. The other good thing about using this lid instead of the tub is that if you'd accidentally knock it over, it's not going to pour everywhere. However, I would like to mention at this point that my daughter did knock over these pots quite a number of times when we were painting and it did take a good few seconds for us to get to the pots and none leaked out so it's not like super runny paint it's quite thick um, so if you do knock it over I reckon you got a good five to seven seconds before anything starts happening so don't worry too much so once I've done this star, well, I mean, once I've finished the outline of this star, I'm obviously going to add a face to it because I like adding faces to all of my, all of my things. But once I've done that, because then you've seen me do a sort of pointy, liney shape, we'll perhaps do something that's round. So maybe we could do a spiral or I might show you the flat brush as well. I definitely want to try and show you a flower as well because flowers are really fun to do. What I did really, I have just realised is I haven't bought myself any water or any tissue to wash my brushes. So I'm going to have to make sure I'm really clever about what colours I use. I can't run out of brushes. That was good, wasn't it? I'm just re-dipping. Hopefully you're noticing just how often I'm having to dip my paintbrush it's quite often. That was something that I had to sort of get used to. So I was like, wow, I'm really having to dip every sort of, every stroke I do, I then have to re-dip my brush. But once you get into the swing of it, it's, um, I find this quite therapeutic. I hope some of you guys do too. Okay, re-dipping. So we're nearly done the star now. So the, I would say that the pink shirt, which is quite extra, isn't it? There's quite a lot going on that, in that pink shirt. I'd say that took me about two days to do. However, I did lots of things in between that, like tend to my kids. Um, so this is the sort of project where if you don't have any interruption, you could probably do a whole one of these in a day. 
But what I would say is that if you're doing both sides, I would recommend waiting. I would do one side, leave it to dry overnight, and then do the other side the next day, just so that it's dry enough. Um, I'll talk about the washing thing afterwards because you need to heat seal it. So I'll talk about that once we finish painting, um, just to make sure that it's all sealed. Okay, so there we have our lovely star. That's looking good. This paintbrush is really, really broken now. Um, as I'm painting, it's like properly sliding off. So that's fun. So if you're wondering why it's a bit wobbly, it's because it's a bit broken. That's what you get for using paint by numbers brushes rather than fancy ones, right? But all, all I would do is just get some super glue in there to stick it on, if you're wondering. So I'm just going to add a face to this. If you've seen any of my other stuff before, you'll know I've got my own little style of doing my faces. So I like to do a big straight line down the middle for the nose. I did this, I think, for the pet plate, plate painting. We did this sort of thing on the plates. And the same rules apply. It's no different, really. I'm going to do a big line across for the eyebrows. And this is why this sort of style is really good to do with kids as well. If you stick to that sort of simple cartoon style, then it feels like something that children want to get involved with. It's not too scary for them either. I think that's why my daughter likes doing it with me because she sees my designs and thinks, I can do that. In fact, she's probably much better than me. She painted a unicorn on her t-shirt the other day and it was pretty impressive. And I think that's why there's not much of the neon pink left because she has really gone to town with it. But what a lovely activity to do. You could do it as a group. I mean, what an amazing activity to do if you were doing like a hen party or having a birthday party for a group of people. Uh, it would be fantastic for a baby shower if you were to buy a pack of plain baby grows or vests. You could all go ahead and make a um, personalised vest for the prospective baby. Um, yeah, hen party would be good. But also, as I said before, with kids, you could do it for uh, a small party. I want to. I wouldn't want to say a birthday party because that would be chaos, wouldn't it? Uh, but you get the idea. It's something you could do as a group. You don't have to do it on your own. And especially if you're using pre-loved items that haven't cost the world, um, it's a really nice, unique activity that hasn't cost loads of money. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and do the smile. Get a nice big smiley face. And what I find is that as you use the brush and you're dipping and you're painting, you're dipping, you're painting, there'll be like a buildup of paint about halfway up your brush. And that will sometimes start to get in the way. So if you start, if you're making the brush strokes feel a bit weird as you go in, that's probably what it is. And what I would recommend is either um, painting your paintbrush onto a bit of scrap paper just to make it nice and free of paint and then starting again with your dip because you're, what's happening really is you're dipping because you want the paint at the end of your brush. And then as you're painting, it's pushing some of it up the brush and that can sometimes get annoying. Uh, it might not get annoying for you, but it definitely does for me. I don't know if I'm just a fussy painter. Um, but yes, if you are finding that, then give your, pa give your paintbrush a good, either a wash or just get rid of all the excess paint. Okay, I've got a lovely smiley face there. What I might just do, because I'm a perfectionist, is just add some little rosy cheeks on there. Nice. So I would say doing like coloured in circles are one of the hardest things because your paintbrush kind of doesn't want to make that shape. So just be aware of that. They're quite hard to do. They have to be quite, quite neat. There we go. Lovely. OK, so we've got our star. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this brush down and I'm going to get another colour. So I'm going to put the green away. And I'm going to do, first of all, I want to do a thick um, shape 
with my flat brush so you can see how easy that is. So what you'll find is that in terms of time, um, this sort of thing takes much longer for obvious reasons than your flat brush. Um, your flat brush, you can do loads of big strokes that don't take very long. So there's a, t there's a couple of considerations here. If you really like this way of working with your flat brush and doing thick lines, then just do that. You don't have to do these fiddly bits if you don't want. It's still going to look amazing. Um, or you could consider doing loads of thick strokes all over your garment, waiting for it to dry overnight, and then doing some thin fiddly bits on top afterwards. Um, but I'm just going to show you now your thick one. So again, we imagine that we've used a highlighter pen. That's going to have the same effect using one of these flat brushes. It's got a similar kind of nib, if you will. So what colour shall we do now? I haven't considered what colours I'm going to do in general. You could go all in and use every single colour. You've got six of them. Well, I'm not going to use white because I don't want to do white on white. So I've got five colours to work with. Green, black, blue, red, yellow. My instinct is to do all of the colours because that's how I tend to work. So maybe we'll just go with all of the four primary colours and leave out black. So we'll maybe use yellow, blue and red. We'll just use the green. So maybe we'll do a red next. So again, I'm going to give it a shape. A good shape like this, like a cocktail shaker. And then open it up. And you should have lots of paint in your lid. And so for this, we have to be a bit more careful because once you put your paint in, you're going to get a lot on the brush. So that first time you put paint to cotton, um, just be aware of how much paint you've got on there. But it doesn't matter too much because, again, this is going to this is going to be more messy in style anyway. So it doesn't matter too much and you don't need to be too um, neat, I don't think. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a zigzag around the star. I think that feels nice. And then I've got, I feel like the way it's going, I tend to like do a thin thing, then a thick thin, then a thin, then thick, thin thick. So you've got that kind of balance. So the way my brain is going is saying we've got a lovely thin star here. So then I might go thick zigzag and then a nice thin flower here. Because I really want to make sure I get a flower in there to show you. Um, because I think they look really effective. I think they look difficult and they're really not. Um, in fact, what I've learned from painting on this fabric is that actually doesn't matter which way your paintbrush goes, it's always going to make a lovely shaped petal or leaf. So anyway, let's start with this zigzag. So I'm going to start here. We're going straight on. Let's see what happens. So we've got a thick line there. So it's much thicker, much thicker but it's got that lovely effect about it. This is what I quite like about. I like that it doesn't go on all the way and I like that you can kind of be quite messy with it. And I might, I'll probably go over it all again, but I'm not gonna make all of it block color. I kind of want some of it to sort of be kind of, um, sort of a little bit see-through if that makes sense. But the main thing you'll notice is how much quicker this was doing this compared to that lovely, lovely, happy star in that corner. So if you want quick and easy, then this is the way to go. In fact, you don't have to use brushes this small. You can use much thicker brushes. This is just my personal preference. I'm just showing you the sort of designs that I like painting in a hope that you feel like it looks um, less, it's less scary to do than the final product looks. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go over quite messily. Again, I want that kind of like brush stroke effect. Nice, nice, nice. I'm happy with that. That's looking good. And that's it really. How quick was that? Wow. So you can kind of see the kind of messiness of it. I think it works quite nicely. I don't think it looks messy in the sense that you're incapable. I think it looks purposely messy. That's the style of it. So the next thing that we're going to do is a thin line and we're going to do a flower. So what colour? I'm thinking maybe yellow. 
I'm worried it won't show up on the camera. So we'll go blue just in case, just to be safe. And we're gonna get a new paintbrush now because that green guy can't be washed, unfortunately. So I've got a even thinner brush, slightly thinner, but the brush strokes will work really nicely. Now I've just, uh, the reason I've not started painting it is I'm just thinking, which ones can I show you that we might kind of try and copy? There's a few different types. So, okay, so for example, on the pink one, we've got this one where I've done the outline of the leaves, but then the flowers themselves are blocking colour. So the reason for that is, as you might have noticed, is I've sort of broken it up. Some of them are quite liney, but some of them are coloured in, and that's kind of um, just to kind of balance the thickness and thinness, right? So we've gone thin line, thick line, thin line, thick line, thin line, thick line. But then also, if you look at it as a whole, you might want a bit here to be coloured in and then a bit here to be coloured in just to balance it, if that makes sense. So they're the sort of considerations. I'm, they're what I'm thinking about when I'm painting. But the joy of it is because I've not really planned anything is that you can decide that as you go and you can work that out. It's kind of like paint, playing Tetris, but with paint. Um, we've got this lovely yellow one at the back. This is the sort of thing we're going to do. Actually, the one on the shorts is what we're going to do. Hang on. Hang on. Let's have a look. Here we go. This guy here, this is the one I love. This is my favourite of the flowers. Hang on, let's make sure you, you can see it properly. Whoop. This one, super easy, really effective. Doesn't matter if you go wrong, it'll still look great. So we're going to do one of those in blue. Let's do it in blue. And the other thing, so this is the great thing about botanicals in general, if you will, uh, so leaves, flowers, is that they fill gaps nicely because you can make them fill whatever shape gap you like. A star, a sun, a spiral, a heart, a moon, all of those things are all quite circular, right? So they all kind of have a space that kind of fits like this kind of area, right? Um, whereas a leaf and a flower can go in any direction you want them to which is why they're great for this sort of thing, because they can fill gaps. So this is why I immediately thought flower here. This is a great place for the stalk. You can make the leaves fit this gap and this gap, and then the flower can be whatever shape you want it. And this is why it's a bit like doing Tetris, because you're just filling gaps, essentially. And I think the reason that I'm explaining it that way is because that's how my brain works, because I don't want to have to think about painting on a shirt. If we think about painting on a shirt, that feels quite scary. Oh, I'm painting a shirt. How on earth am I gonna do it? Whereas, oh, I'm gonna put a stalk here and a leaf here to fill this gap, feels much safer. And then I feel more confident in doing it. Um, and hopefully that will give you guys the confidence to do the same. Not that it matters too much, because let's not forget that this shirt costs 50 pence. So I don't need to be too worried at all. So now we're going to go in with a stalk. So you can kind of start wherever you want. I'm going to start quite far down, I think, and I might make it a bit wavy. There we go, got a wavy line on there. It's quite faint because it's sort of like ran out of paint. And again, we're going to have to go over it. And because I'm left-handed, I've got to hold my little finger as a support so that my whole hand is hovering above the shirt so that I don't smudge the red bit because I didn't think to go from right to left, did I? Because this is the scourge of being left-handed. This often happens. You'd think I'd learn, but I just don't. Oh well, it's ma it makes me have a very steady hand. I think I'd be quite a good pinstriper on cars. Um, if you want, by the way, if you want a bit of a uh, therapeutic art watching, I would highly recommend pinstriping. So if you see on like old uh, American cars, like hot rods and things like that, and they have like lines painted along the sides of the car, that is literally someone who goes along with a paintbrush like this, but much longer, and they paint the line in one stroke. 
and it is a joy to watch. So if you want something even more relaxing than my lovely voice, uh, after this session, I do recommend watching some pin striking. It's very fun. Okay, so I've done a lovely wavy line. And so now I'm gonna do two leaves. I think I'm gonna fill this gap here and then this gap here. I quite like, so again, this is one of these personal preference things. Um, I'm gonna tell you what my daughter said the other day. To my, I, I had my brother come round so I could teach him how to lino print. And then my daughter wanted to get involved. So I let her have a go because she's quite good at it. She's five. And as she was doing it, she made her t-shirt completely symmetrical. So if you imagine that this was her shirt, she'd do a star here, star here, zigzag, zigzag, flower, flower. Whereas I'm just gonna go all the different things everywhere. And Ramona said to my brother, you see, mummy doesn't like doing symmetry. I like doing mine with symmetry. So the point of this is that some people like symmetry in their painting and some don't. At this point, this is where you'll decide whether you're one of those people. I'm gonna do two completely different leaves. So I'm gonna do one to fill this space and one to fill this space, and they're gonna be different shapes. If you're not into that, that's fine. Um, you would just maybe do, you could quite easily get a nice pointy leaf in here and a nice pointy leaf in here that are exactly the same either side. You've given yourself enough space to do that. So if you don't know how much you like symmetry or not, then this is a good test. Because at this point you'd be going, no Rosie, why are the leaves so different? But generally speaking, I quite like just kind of seeing what happens. So that felt like the natural thing to do there. It's kind of a heart shape. And then this one's gonna be completely different and that's gonna be quite round like that. And that I did that quite quickly because I didn't want to think about it too much. I didn't want to overthink it. I just wanted to fill the space. So I'm just going to go over these lines again. This is looking nice. Yeah, I do quite like this blue. Just the other thing as well, if you are quite messy like I am, just every so often check this part of your hand before you continue. Because I have done things before where I've painted, I've, I've been doing some printing and then I've like lifted my hand up and there's a great bit of smudge because I had it had loads of paint on the side of my hand. Now the other thing you might consider at this point is whether you want to use different colours um, in certain designs. So you might want to fill the gap of this leaf with a different colour. I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to do each thing in one colour. So you've got the star in green, the zigzag in red, the flower in blue. Um, but you can mix it up. Also, you can mix these colours. This is the other thing. I have seen people mix these colours together. So there's nothing to stop you getting a little palette and putting the you know red and blue together to make you purple. Um, I haven't done that as of yet, mainly out of laziness, I would have thought. I just haven't, uh, yeah, I just haven't had a go. Um, but like I say, there's loads of different paints out there. And they're all pretty good. I've not had any bad shows so far and if you heat seal them correctly then they wash really nicely as well. I would just say that they tend to say don't use them, don't put them in really hot washes. Nice gentle uh, detergent and a cool wash cycle. Okay I'll just finish this leaf off. Nearly there. Okay, so we've got our leaves and now I'm just gonna add the flower. I'm just wondering actually if we want a leaf here and here or do we save this space for something tiny? I'm thinking maybe we could do something with this space, couldn't we? We could maybe do a spiral or just a circle. So this is the this is where you this is the creative part of it. This is the experimentation part of it. Is because we've not planned anything and we're just going for it. You can decide exactly what you want to do as you do it. 
So I'm going to do the flower next. So how did I do that flower on these shorts? Let's have a look. Okay, so there's a few different ways you could do this. We can either um, put a circle, um, uh, maybe like an inch or two above the end of the stalk, and then we can work off the circle. Or you can work from the end stem and add your sort of middle of the flower at the end, which is what I think I'm going to do here. So this is your centre point, the end of the stalk, or you could put a circle here and that would be your centre point. Doesn't really matter, but I like starting here because it kind of paves the way for where you're going to go. So I think I'm going to do five petals. And again, I'm not thinking at all about where this is going. I'm just going for it. This is going to fill this gap here, look. There we go. Easy. I just did a set of wiggly lines, essentially, and that made a nice flower. And then you can decide then where your centre goes. So I think the centre will probably go here. And you could, if you so wished, um, you could add some patterns. So you could do a wiggly line or a zigzag or just a dot. In fact, I'll do it. Let's do a dot here so you can see what that looks like. That looks quite nice. Wow, this is so much nicer to do when both of my children are at school and nursery. It's so much quieter. I can hear my own voice. It feels like this leaf has two points, so I'm going to do two dots on this one. It feels like the right thing to do. And this is the other fun thing, is that you can add embellishments at the end, so you might want to fill your area, and then afterwards, so you can kind of sit on these shorts, actually. So you've got, like, um, the red bits are kind of like the embellishments. So you've got... Hang on. Can you see you've got that moon shape with the kind of little red rainbows there. You've got the wiggly line next to the leaf. You've got next to this leaf, you've got three red dots. Oh God, I don't know which way to turn it. It's so confusing. Um, but yes, you can do all of that afterwards. If you don't feel like it's um, exciting enough, then you can just go in afterwards and fill. So, you know, you could fill this gap here with a couple of dots. We were talking about this gap here, but like these might have some dots in. You might have a zigzag here or a circle. So it's just, you can add as much or as little as you want. What time are we on? Okay, I'm just trying to decide if I should add on to this. If I should go over this flower. I'll go over some of it and then we'll see if the space, I, want, I do just want to see if I can get some yellow in, just so we can see the effect of using all those sort of primary colours. Over the white, I think that works quite nicely. Um, but also, I would say, in my experience of doing a lot of printing and stuff, that if you are, if you like things a bit more simple than I do, because I know I'm quite chaotic in the way that I like things to look, it is very, very, um, what's the word? It looks amazing if you choose just one colour. So don't feel like you have to use all of the colours. I printed white trousers with just black and that looks amazing. It's still really, really effective. Um, so you don't have to use all the colours at all. Um, I just always tend to get quite excited by all the colours. But it's funny though, I do all of these mad paintings on things and I do think they look amazing. And then I'll be like, oh, what am I going to wear today? I'll just wear one colour. <laughs> I'll just wear a very plain t-shirt and a plain trouser. I should probably take my own advice. And in fact, what I do need to do is take my own advice here and scooch, remember, to scooch the paper up so that I don't go through onto the other side of the shirt. Because I just noticed then I was just on the edge here. So I'm just going to push this paper up. At this point, this green star is dry to touch. So that's how quickly it dries, which is great, right? So this feels dry to touch. It's not fully dry, right? So I, I wouldn't say, you know, you can start wearing it but you're not going to smudge it. So you're okay to push your paper up and it's not going to go through onto the side. So it's quite nice how quickly they dry. So just while I go over this flower, I'm just going to think about, I just want to add some yellow to it before we finish. 
So I'd like to do, I think I'd, I don't know if I want to do a spiral. Or maybe a heart would look nice here. So maybe I'll do quite a thick yellow heart. So I'm not going to finish this flower off just so that we have enough time. Because I just want to go over the um, aftercare instructions. I know I've gone over how to wash it. But I do want to make sure that you guys know how to heat seal these because I think that's the key to the to the longevity and the vibrancy of the colours is making sure that they're heat sealed. What that basically means is some inks, the reason these are fabric inks is because they've got something in them. I don't really know the science, but when you apply a lot of heat to them before they're washed, then it makes them permanent. So it's just making sure that the right amount of heat is applied to them because if you don't apply the, enough heat, then they could wash out. So that's why that's really important. But if you do it correctly, then you're laughing. Okay, so I think I'll stop this flower now, because we're nearly done. I'm just gonna get another brush very quickly, give my yellow a shake. Okay, now this is a slightly bigger brush, so we might get a slightly thicker line, which is okay because I kind of want a thick line. Feel like something at this point could be coloured in, so you could have something blocked. So I might do a very quick heart that just fills this gap here, going straight in, and I'm going to colour it in. Nice. So the reason I want to show you the coloured in thing is because this is when you're most likely to get a lot of um, colour going through the other side of your item. So this is why it's really important to have stuff in between. Um, any kind of card or paper is fine. You might find if it's quite thin paper that it will stick to the paint. You just need to make sure you lift it. So I'm going to show you this now. So I've done this bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully just put my fingers through, lift it up from the paper, just to give it, you know, a bit of space between the paper so it's not stuck completely. What can happen is if you leave it to dry on the paper, it can stick to the paper and then you have to sort of peel the paper off afterwards and it can get like properly stuck which is fine, it would wash off, it's just a bit messy and annoying. The other thing that you'll find with block colour, so this bit colouring in, obviously you can use more paint, but you'll find, depending on what colour you've used, so this might be okay because you're using yellow and white, which are quite similar, but if I was using, say, the black on here, you might find you want to go over and do an extra layer because it might sort of look a bit wishy-washy. So if you want it to be super block, then consider a second layer which obviously will take longer to dry um, but yeah just so you know so I'm going to finish this heart off and then I'll just show tell you how to heat seal it you can really slap this on you don't have to be neat only at the edges bit of paper starts is like slightly curled up which is quite annoying so I'm just going to press down to make it a bit flatter and what I might do is when this is dried I might go over this with another colour I might do some designs on it so I could either outline it or I could put some I could put a face on it couldn't I in fact that's probably what I'll do um or some other details okay that's looking good okay so I'm going to lift this up slightly so you can see what we've managed today. So we have got our, I know it's upside down, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm scared to turn it the other way. You've got your pointy lines with your thin paintbrush. You've got a thick flat brush, which makes your nice thick designs, which I would recommend are good for zigzags, wavy lines, circles, spirals, or just bigger versions of what you're doing. So you could still do a heart, but it might just be bigger. Um, and then you've got your flower, which fills gaps. You can embellish, you can colour things in, but you might want to consider two layers. 
And you also need to remember to lift it up from the paper every so often so it doesn't stick. So there's our, well, work in progress. We will continue it. And to finish, I'll just explain to you very quickly. I'll leave this up so leave this up so you can see my face a slightly. Or, or maybe not. I don't know. I can be bothered. Um, no, I will. Because it looks weird just looking at my knees, doesn't it? Okay. I'll move across slightly. I'm back. So, uh, you finish your design. I would recommend doing one side. And if you're going to do the other side, then I would wait until the next day to finish it. Um, the instructions on the paints usually say to wait for like four to five days before you heat seal them. However, I have not listened to that advice and it has still been fine. So I would recommend if you're, if you're impatient like me and you want to start wearing your stuff straight away, I think the last thing that you painted, so whether it's the front side or the back side or the sleeves, wait a couple of days. So I'd wait maybe two days so that you know that it's definitely dry because like this bit's already nearly dry. You could probably, you probably be fine. Um, but yeah, wait two days just to be sure. They say four to five. And then what you have to do is you need to get your garment onto an ironing board. You want it facing upwards so you can see your design. And then you're going to put a tea towel on top of it. And then you're going to iron the tea towel on the highest heat possible. Um, and you need to be ironing the painted area for four to five minutes. So it's a long old time, but that's how like, you need it to be really, really hot. So you want your iron on the highest setting possible with absolutely no water. So the point of this is it all has to be done dry because it's stopping the paint from being able to be washed out afterwards. So you're not doing any steam, you're not doing any puffs of steam at all. You leave it dry. So you want a very, very hot iron. You put your, so what I tend to do is I like, might put this bit of design. So this bit that we've done today, for example, I put a tea towel over that bit and then I'd iron over that, keep moving it for four to five minutes. And then I know that that bit's done, lift the tea towel up, move it over to the next bit. So every single bit needs to have been ironed for about five minutes. Um, and what you'll find, don't be alarmed, because what I tend to do is I'll iron it and then lift the tea towel up, feel it, it'll be like, oh, that's hot, okay, and then just keep going for four to five minutes. What you'll find is when you lift your tea towel up, it might stick slightly to the design, that's fine, don't worry about it, but sporadically lift up your tea towel just to make sure it's all okay. You'd also find it might steam, like you'll see a bit of smoke. I don't think it's smoke, maybe steam, but that's what you want. You need it to be really, really hot without um, setting fire to your house. Um, but yes, all of those instructions, I believe, are on the box for the paints. Um, but because I've done a lot of heat sealing in my time, because you have to do it with screen printed items as well, um, is that it really does matter how long you do it for and it does need to be very, very hot. So I'm just like reiterating that so you don't forget and then put your stuff in the wash and then it go a bit funny. I think for the most part it would be fine if you washed it anyway, but just just for the sake of not ruining it, um, make sure you're ironing your items for five minutes, but make sure something's on top of it. And last of all, um, aftercare, as I mentioned before, you want a kind of low setting on your washing machine. So like a low temperature, that's the word I was looking for, temperature, uh, and a mild detergent. You don't want to use loads and loads of chemicals. And also for aftercare, don't iron directly onto your print afterwards. So if, you're, if you've got a lovely white shirt like this and it gets all crumpled in the wash, turn it inside out before you iron it. Don't iron onto the paint. I, I think it would be fine, but I just think for safety, I, I don't know, I, I wouldn't want to ruin it for the sake of ironing it. Or just don't iron it at all. I don't tend to iron anything really. Um, and I think that's it. I think I've said everything I need to say. I hope that I've made you feel safe um, having a go at fabric painting because it is super easy. I mean, what in a, I was talking for quite a lot of that and we've managed to get a quarter of a shirt done, right? It looks really nice, even though it's upside down. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll have a go. Please let me know if you do. I've been Rosie and um, my business is Rosie Ramona and I'm still, I'm still covered by the logo. I'm sitting in the wrong place. Um, and I'll be back soon for another craft session. Um, I need to think about what we're going to do next. If you have any um, 
recommendations. If there's anything you want me to do, please let me know. Uh, there's loads of stuff I can do. So just give me a shout out. Let me know if there's anything you want to see me try. Um, and I'll see you all soon. Uh, have a wonderful Tuesday. I'm going to have a very quiet Tuesday afternoon. Um, and thanks for having me. I'll see you soon. Bye.